Hi, my name is Zachary Moore, and I was raised as a Christian, and I became an atheist. A transformation which surprised a great number of people, most of all myself. Um, quite frankly, I never expected myself to become a non-believer. That didn't even, it wasn't even something that occurred to me was even possible uh, for somebody who was raised as a Christian and believed it, um, accepted Jesus as his personal savior, uh, and yet it happened. Um, and it was something I think that was very positive in my life also. Uh, I find myself more, even more appreciative of the Christianity that I was raised in now than I was as a Christian. I find myself more enamored of the Bible simply as a, a document. I find it utterly fascinating, and I, I spend probably more time reading it now than I did as a Christian, although I did read it a lot as a Christian. Um, and... I generally find all religion kind of fascinating, um, and I, I see it all falling under the same, you know, basic philosophical, mythological rubric. And um, anyway, I, I appreciate it much more now than I did back then when I, I thought that I was the, the holder of the only true doctrine. Now that transformation, um, you know, being raised as a Christian, uh, you, as you can imagine, most of my family are Christians and, and that was kind of difficult um, for me as well as for them and it's to that I'd like to, to speak primarily because it is difficult uh, to go through that um, as somebody who is a Christian undergoing apostasy it can be very um, lonely you know if, if you don't know anybody that you if there's nobody that you can talk to who's gone through a similar circumstance like was the case for me. I spent um, a lot of time just in solitude, uh, reading books, um, reading articles online, you know, commenting on uh, various discussion boards, uh, and that was all fine and interesting and, and rewarding, but I didn't have anybody that I could talk to about it. And I think most Christians, uh, you know, Christian, Christian parents, my Christian parents probably didn't have anybody that they could talk to. I don't think there are many resources within the Christian church these days uh, for people that are coping with apostasy. Um, I think most Christians, if not all Christians, have significant and serious doubts about their faith, if we're being totally honest with ourselves. Um, you know, here in the 21st century, the, the claims that are made by religion are patently ridiculous. I mean, we, we sort of have to admit that the, the claim of a man rising from the dead and floating off into the clouds, in this day and age, that is ridiculous. I mean, it, it simply is. And yet, the the faith of Christianity, you know, whatever whatever supports your faith and buoys your faith up, that's what keeps you going. Um, and yet, those doubts remain, and they gnaw, and they gnaw, and it can be very hard to get rid of them. In fact, you know. Some people, although they turn to you know Christian apologetics arguments and things like that to, to strengthen their faith and bolster their faith because they don't want to give it up, um, it works for some. It absolutely does. I've met Christians who have turned to apologetical arguments and seem much more stronger in their faith now than they were before. And yet I found others who turn to those arguments and end up totally on my side, totally convinced that they were wrong the whole time. And so it's kind of a crapshoot. And for those Christians that do experience that that existential crisis, that, that spiritual crisis of, oh my God, this is all not true. Um, you know, I'd just like to reach out to you and let you know that you don't have to go through that process alone. There are, as I found, a, there's a great wealth of local free thought organizations here in Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, there's 20 um, I'm active with the DFW Coalition of Reason. We coordinate between about 20 different local organizations. I'm personally involved with the Fellowship of Free Thought in Dallas. We have hundreds of people that, that come and gather and, and trade stories and learn from and with each other. And it's, uh, it's very rewarding to have that social connection. So if you're struggling with your own apostasy, if you, if you, even if you still consider yourself a Christian, 
why not go to the local free thought organization and just talk with those people, get a sense of where they're coming from. I go to Christian churches still all the time. I, I really enjoy the company. I enjoy learning from them. I it fascinates me to, to learn about their different theologies. Every every different church I go to has a different take on things. Um, it's fascinating for me to uh, engage with believers, and I love trading ideas because you know what? Even though I'm I'm currently a free thinker and atheist, I might be wrong. You know, I don't have all the answers. All I do, all I have, are the arguments that have convinced me so far. But I could be turned the other way. So I would urge any Christians that are struggling with their own doubts, find a local free thought organization. Those people are very friendly. They love talking about this kind of stuff. You're probably going to find a, a friendlier environment there than you will at your own church. Unfortunately, I think it's really a shame that uh, Christian churches these days don't really have good resources for dealing with apostasy or doubts other than you know the old-fashioned apologetics and lastly to um, to parents and other families that are struggling with you know children or other family members who are going through a, a spiritual crisis and and you fear are going into atheism it's not all bad you know I'm the same person pretty much that I was uh, as I was raised as a Christian I still have the same basic morals. Um, I still consider myself a good person. I haven't killed anybody. I haven't stolen anything. I haven't done anything wrong. I pay my taxes. Um, I own a home. Um, I have a car. I'm raising kids. You know, I'm married. It, I mean, the, the whole thing, it, it, I, you know, I'm living a normal life. I take my trash out to the to the side of the road every uh, every week. So it's, it's a normal life I'm living. This is not, um, you know, some debauchery or some nonstop orgy of excess that that we're involved with and almost all of the atheists that I've met so far have pretty much the same lifestyles I mean we're all normal people in fact even if you don't realize it, you probably know some atheists in your life they just probably haven't been open with it for a large part because um, they feel that if you know most atheists feel that if they are open about their atheism They'll lose friendships. They'll lose family relations. Um, you know, they'll be cut off. A lot of you know kids in high school are worried about coming out as atheists to their parents because their parents won't help them pay for college. That is a shame. That is a real tragedy. That that re that really shouldn't happen. So what I would urge you to do is have an open mind. You know, explore. You know what your kids are going through. Explore what your family members are going through. Ask them questions. Have discussions. Don't take it personally. I know you feel like they're rejecting everything that you believe in and, and everything that makes you you, but that is not the case. They still love you. They still need you as parents, and they will still want to talk to you about these things. It may be difficult. They may be angry you know, about the, uh, the, the faith that they're raised in if they now think it's wrong. Have some humility have some patience and and try to keep the lines of dialogue going I think that's the best thing that you can do and trust me things will end up okay so that's all I have to say I'm the former Christian now atheist and very happy about it see you later